now hit record. Okay. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Haley. Hi. Hello. Hello, everyone. All right. Well, everybody, um, we'll go ahead and get started. We may have a few folks trickling in here in just a few minutes, but um, as you can tell, it's kind of a smaller group. And uh, this is our first of many um, series talking about different types, different aspects of college life at Center. And uh, of course, this one is highlighting more so study abroad and study away opportunities. Haley and Victoria, um, I'll go ahead and say that for now, it's just you two. So it's going to be a pretty intimate conversation. However, if you don't want to take off Zoom or your camera, that's totally fine. Um, but if you're comfortable and you want to, then you're welcome to turn on your camera um, and, and chat with us throughout. You're welcome to interrupt us with any questions or put those in the chat. Whatever you all see fit, we're, we're super flexible and happy that you all are here. But um, to get started, I'll introduce myself and then let the other folks from Center introduce themselves. And uh, my name is Cody Cook. I serve as the Assistant Director of Admission and Scholarship Coordinator. So I work a lot with our different scholarship programs. Um, I'm a Center alum, class of 2014. And when I was a student, I studied abroad three different times um, and was able to travel to a lot of different places. Um, I studied abroad a long term in Merida, Mexico, studied abroad a center term, which is our short January term. We'll talk about that here in a bit in Ghana and then studied abroad another center term, um, went back to Merida, Mexico. So Gigi, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Gigi. Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, I graduated from Center in 2018, so not too long ago. Um, you'll sense a common theme amongst our admission <laughs> staff. Um, and while I was at Center, I also studied abroad in Merida, Mexico for a semester, and it was one of the highlights of my Center experiences. So happy to talk about studying abroad with you guys. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Adriana Martin. I am the Assistant Director for Diversity Recruitment in our admission office. Um, I am also a Center alum, which, as Suji said, is a trend, um, but I'm originally from Los Angeles, so I know we have another Californian with us. It's exciting to see you here. Um, during my time at Center, I also studied abroad. I did a more independent program in Spain, um, but also we it was a really wonderful and transformative experience and really different from the kinds of educational experiences that you get to have um, both during your time at Center but also anywhere else. So we're really excited to talk to you all about study abroad and study away um, and thank you all for being here. Awesome. All right, well, I'm going to do a screen share so it may shift your, um, your screens a bit. But awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and get started with a short presentation. We'll, of course, have an opportunity for questions towards the end. But as I mentioned earlier, it's a small group. So if you want to ask a question in the moment, just take yourself off mute and, uh, and we'll definitely get to those. But to talk a bit more about study abroad at Center, um, we do have a very robust study abroad and study away program. Um, it's one of the top in the country. We've been named before number one or the top three in the country for study abroad um, opportunities because of our commitment. So the institution itself makes a commitment to every student that they'll have an opportunity before they graduate to study abroad or study away. Uh, many students do that multiple times. So our statistic right now and in, in the latest um, data that we've collected is about 85% of our students study abroad or study away at least once and about 50% um, study abroad more than once, which is a really great statistic. We're super excited about that. And Center makes it really easy. We'll talk about those steps and financial aid and all of those things. But um, you'll see an overall map. We'll break this down a bit for you so that you can um, learn more about the specific programs that we offer. But you'll see here we have a wide variety of opportunities all over the world to study abroad and study away if that's something that interests you. Um, again, as I mentioned, it's a part of the Center commitment. So um, every student, no matter your major, no matter, you know, whatever it is that you want to pursue. If you're a pre-medicine biology major, um, you're welcome to study abroad and we have opportunities for that. And to break this down a little bit more by um, the level of the foreign languages that are required when you study away or abroad. Um, so we have a number of immersion programs that are taught in the foreign language. Um, so for German, Spanish, and French, we have those on the left-hand side. And they have a number of classes taught in English, 
but you must take a foreign language in um, the respective country. So we have those for Shanghai, which is Mandarin and Chinese, Yamaguchi is Japanese, Nikita is also Japanese, um, and Bhutan, I cannot say that, but that is the <laughs> language that you're expected to take. Um, Strasbourg is French, and then Merida is Spanish. And then for our London and sort of other England um, courses or study away trips, and then um, Northern Ireland, we have classes taught in English and the official language there is English as well. So this is how we sort of break down our semester long programs um, for students. Yeah, so Gigi's point about kind of breakdown by language is one of the ways that students think about how they'll choose like one of their um, study abroad opportunities, but another way that students sometimes think about which semester long program they'd like to pursue is by the level of independence. I think different students have varying degrees of comfortability when it comes to being away in a foreign country. For some students, our semesters abroad are really the first time that they've ever gone out of the country, whereas other students are really seasoned travel or travelers, or maybe they come from um, you know, multicultural families and they're kind of used to this kind of cultural immersion. So thinking about um, these semester programs by level of independence, I think is pretty fruitful for some of our students. Um, when we look at this breakdown, I'll talk a little bit about these programs that our center professor run. So our programs that happen in London, in Strasbourg, France, and in Medida in Mexico are all center students and all of the courses are taught by center professors, though there are some faculty, some local faculty that we work with. Um, but this is a program that's not not independent, but you're really taking a chunk of the center community with you as you go and you study abroad um, for a semester. We also have these programs that are kind of an in-between. Um, we're working with these third-party providers like Keys um, in the case of Segovia and um, a program in Germany um, or in Shanghai. Um, for some of these programs, the Keys programs in particular, we often do have center faculty that are running these programs. Um, but what's different about these programs versus the center professor led programs is that again we're working with third-party provider um, often for these programs though even if a center professor is or isn't leading the program you typically are with center students so you're with students that you know either are your friends or you know by virtue of partaking in the center community um, Going to more independent are our exchange programs um, these programs are exactly what they sound like exchange programs wherein um, center sends students to these universities and then those universities will often send students to center um, these are really great i think there's some really great cultural exchange that happens in these programs and then the most independent programs are ones where students are directly enrolled in a university um, the true programs that we have there are the program that we have in reading england um, and then we also have a program in Glasgow, Scotland. These are pretty independent programs. Um, sometimes there are maybe three to five other center students that go with you, but you really are immersing yourself in the community of that college or university abroad and really being a student at that place for a year. Um, when I studied abroad, I did. Um, I directly enrolled to university. The program that I did was a bit different and, and isn't on this list. It was a program in Spain, but um, it was the perfect choice for me. I knew that I wanted to have this abroad experience, but I didn't necessarily need to take the center community with me when I did that. I wanted to learn how to navigate um, a new place by myself. I liked, you know, living in an apartment. I liked cooking for myself. I liked the experience of taking the metro to school every day. And so for me, that really was the right choice, but it really is a matter of preference. Um, I am seeing a question below about kind of 
living situations and I'll say that it really depends on the program that you're doing. Um, if you are doing one of these more independent programs, you'll likely live in like her traditional residence hall at one of those universities. Um, if you're doing one of these center professor led programs, it kind of depends. For some of the programs, we have apartments where you'll live with other center students. In some of these programs, we have homestays, which we know Gigi will talk a bit about later. So it kind of depends on where you're going. And the folks in the study abroad office will also help you figure out if the type of living situation is also important to you when you're making a choice. All right, um, so we have these really great international experiences for, for center students, um, but we also have these really great domestic programs. Um, we have two of them. Um, the first one is this one, which is the Center in Washington, D.C. program. I think what's really neat about this program is that students are getting an experience away from center. That experience can be um, in addition to an abroad experience, so you can certainly have an international experience and a domestic experience in DC. But what's really neat about this, these programs is that you're getting some really great in-depth internship experience. I would say the Center in Washington program tends to be really great for students that are interested in things like nonprofit work, students that are really interested in um, politics, students that are interested in going to law school, um, really students that are interested in kind of that DC vibe. They really want to get involved in what life in DC is like and you get a great opportunity to do that through these internship experiences. Um, I, I believe, and, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, for this program, um, Center has housing and you can either live with Center students or with other students that partake in this program. So you get to know students from other schools as well, um, but you're in apartment style living for this. So it is a bit more independent in that way. Um, and this has some examples of different types of internships that students have done um, while in DC though. If you have an interest, if there is a nonprofit organization or an NGO that you are really interested in, um, the you know center for or our study abroad office will really help you find those experiences. Um, the next version is our center. New York experience. Um, this program is a new program. Um, it's starting off this school year um, and it's this really great three-way collaboration between the Center, um, Swanee, sometimes known as the University of the South, and then Rhodes. Um, all three of us are small liberal arts colleges that are really dedicated to the liberal arts experience, which I think will be really great for our students. Um, the New York program is really neat in that it will have an emphasis on theater. So for students that are really interested in dramatic arts, it it'll be a really good option. Um, but there's also a really great emphasis on anthropology and sociology, really thinking about the ways in which New York as a city has developed into this cosmopolitan multicultural city and thinking about how that has um, affected the growth of the city, how the city is designed, um, and thinking thoughtfully about about those things. Again, Center New York will have internship opportunities. Um, I imagine that there will be some students that are really interested in economics and finance that might pursue, even though there isn't an econ focus. I can really imagine some students being interested, you know, in doing some neat Wall Street work who might get an opportunity to do that this way. Um, so really, this I think this program is exciting because it's new. Um, we don't yet know how it will develop, but I think it'll be a really good opportunity for a good deal of students. Awesome, thank you, Adriana. I'm gonna take us internationally again. So, and talk about sort of our um, semester long programs, our center in Strasbourg or center in the Yucatan programs um, or center in Shanghai, things like that. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we have sort of the breakdown by language of these different programs, but a student doesn't have to major or minor in a specific language in order to study abroad in France, per se. You don't have to 
um, major in French or you don't have to have taken French in high school to um, study abroad in France, um, which I like the flexibility of that. I think it allows students to um, maybe start a new language if they want to or just experience a new culture if they want to. Um, so something that's sort of neat with our center in Strasbourg or center in Shanghai or center in Yucatan um, programs is that financial aid is the same as if you were on campus. So students only have to pay a deposit to hold their spot for the respective programs um, and then pay for airfare, but um, financial aid is the same as if you're on campus when you're studying abroad internationally. Um, and then something that's also sort of unique to our programs is that we guarantee a study abroad experience but also as part of that center commitment, we guarantee an internship. And a lot of our students um, complete that internship while abroad, um, which is really cool. So students will be taking classes in a number of different um, areas. So it depends on which center professor is going with them, depending on if it's a Spanish professor going to Merida, per se, um, they can teach Spanish classes there. But also you could have an economics professor that is going abroad with students to Strasbourg and they'll be taking um, economics classes in France as well. Um, so to talk about the next slide a little bit, one more. Yeah, there we go. Center in the Yucatan a little bit. Um, so we had Dr. Marie Petkus slated to go on this trip um, and she is an economics professor. So she would be taking or teaching economics classes in Merida, Mexico. When I was there, I was taking a whole bunch of Spanish courses, um, which was perfect because I was a Spanish major. So I was knocking out a bunch of requirements for my major. Um, but it really, again, depends on which professor goes with the students for the student led programs. Um, and in regards to the question that we got earlier in the chat, um, our living situation in Merida is a little bit different, which I actually really enjoyed. So students were staying with homestay families and I really got to know my homestay family really well. Um, I think that sort of enhances the experience a, a lot more in the Center in the Yucatan program. It allows a student to sit down and have meals with their homestay family, you know, really indulge in the culture of um, Mexico and and, and uh, really get to know their family really well. So that was sort of the highlight for me. Um, in places like Strasbourg or London, you're staying with um, center students in an apartment. So you're able to have a different bonding experience in that sense, but you're, you are more independent. You know, you have to cook for yourself. <laughs> you don't have a homestay family making your meals every day. But I do think it allows students to grow and, and learn a lot more about not only themselves, but the other students that are on the trip with them. And it is a different type of bonding experience. So either way, students are really immersing themselves and learning a lot about independence, a, a lot about the culture, of whichever um, country that they're in um, while also getting internship um, experience and taking classes maybe outside of their major so they might learn something new um, or if you're like me you can knock out some um, requirements for the major as well. Awesome. All right well there's also um, some other opportunities or some other ways where you can study internationally um, or even domestically um, so to talk a bit about what we call center term, um, center term is a three week course that takes place in January. So we start typically after the new year and then we'll go for three weeks. Um, there's a break after center term before spring term begins. And this is an opportunity for a lot of students to travel abroad um, and, and take advantage of a lot of different opportunities. Center term is something that we're pretty known for and we give faculty members and even staff members an opportunity to really teach and do what they want to do, showcase their research and, and travel all over the world. Uh, what's displayed on your screen right now is actually a summer program, but it does sometimes take place during center term in Barbados. And you'll see that we do field research and learn field research techniques. Um, we work a lot with different monkeys and, and marine biology and sea animals and so on and so forth. So it's really interesting um, to have that opportunity to be able to go and actually not just learn these things from a textbook, but truly engage in these opportunities. Um, these are some upcoming trips that we're taking in center term 2021, so next year. You'll see that we're offering Peru, which is um, both a math and archeology span class led by two of our faculty members. Um, so of course, 
you know, you get to study and do archaeological digs, you get to do some math with uh, different pyramids and whatnot. And then uh, most importantly, you'll see down here that you get to meet llamas and alpacas, which our director of study abroad, Lori Hartman Mahmood, or Lori Hartman is, is very excited about. But um, some other opportunities, France, you'll see where you get to learn about history. Um, and of course, France's Games of Thrones. So there's a bit of pop culture and political science and history. We really make sure that these classes aren't just focused on one particular subject. So it's often taught by two or more professors. There's a lot of intersections here. And, uh, and we want to make sure that students have an opportunity to go abroad. So just because a history, it's a history course and taught by a history and an English professor does not mean that you have to major in history or in English to be able to take advantage of these opportunities. For example, when I went to Ghana, um, my junior year during center term, I was taking an education course. And although I was interested in education and still work in education, that wasn't my major or minor. So I was able to take advantage of those things. Belize, you'll see that we're studying Caribbean ecology um, with two professors there. Field research is, is key here, those hands-on experiences. And oftentimes we're going to places where faculty members have done their research. As you might know, um, our faculty members are some of the best in their fields. They all have PhDs or terminal degrees. So that they've, they've written dissertations, they've done extensive research and they love to share that with students. The Gambia is a place where we're going this upcoming center term. Um, it's an environmental science course, which is pretty awesome, um, focusing on different disease controls and uh, public health initiatives, human environmental health um, interactions and whatnot. And so, uh, again, talking about those hands-on experiences is really key. Japan, um, there are some shifts. I'll be honest that we're currently working on how these will be implemented with COVID-19. And so, um, you know, hopefully by the time you all get to center and, and get ready to study abroad, those opportunities will be back in full force. But for example, Japan next year, we're actually going to do an on-campus course in January um, talking about the subject. And then next May, May 20, 2021, uh, Dr. Shalkoff will be taking students to Japan. So uh, we're adapting well. We're making sure that we're holding true to our promise to all students that they'll have an abroad or away opportunity. And so, um, yeah. And then Tahiti, you'll see here, these are led by two French faculty members, but it also has a humanities course. Uh, Dr. DeMont did a lot of research in Tahiti, so he's very excited. He actually does summer research with students who more of an independent study in Tahiti as well. So one of our students last year was able to spend about two months in Tahiti afterwards. And Bhutan, um, I don't know if you all know a lot about Bhutan, but it's known as the happiness, happiest place in the world. We have a semester long program in Bhutan, but also some center term and summer programs there. And we study what does it mean gross national happiness or gross domestic happiness. Um, they don't have gross domestic product in Bhutan. So, so again, going to really unique and cool places where you might not have the opportunity to go to again, or it's, it's a lot simpler to go whenever you have this opportunity most of our center term courses, again, as you've noticed in the trend, are led by center faculty members and about 20 to 30 center students will be going with you. So it'll be very cohort based um, and, and very, as a group, um, there isn't a lot of that independence like Adriana was talking about, but again, really cool and unique opportunities to, to take advantage of that. Center term is also a great place to do domestic internships or independent studies. So you'll see students not only partaking in study abroad opportunities, but um, going to DC for maybe a shorter three-week internship. I know for my first year, um, faculty members really use center term as kind of a unique opportunity to teach whatever they want to teach. And the oil spill had just happened my first year. And my class that I took during center term was actualizing the great spill. And so we went down to Alabama, the Gulf, and we studied the impacts and the effects of the, the oil spill, both economically, so it was kind of an econ focus, but also biologically. So we went and we actually toured an oil rig. We studied at the um, Dolphin Island Sea Lab with a center alum who is actually one of the world leading experts on the oil spill, Dr. Monty Graham. So really cool, unique opportunities. Um, and, and we hope that you would be able to join us and take advantage of some of those. So. Yeah, and I think one thing I would say too is, you know, this appreciation 
for global citizenship, I do think extends beyond just these um, international or domestic experiences. I do think that center students have this appreciation for global thinking. And I think that's really immersed in the kind of coursework that you take because our professors also have that interest in global thinking. And so the kinds of conversations that you have, whether you're abroad or you're on campus, do have this great international focus that I think is really important to highlight. Um, I think for us, we recognize recognize that, you know, being a global citizen doesn't necessarily mean you have to be away. You can also think globally um, while thinking about your local community or maybe the broader community that surrounds you. And so I think that's a really important part of life at Center too. On top of, you know, being able to go abroad is, is really exciting and transformative too. Awesome. Well, I'm going to stop screen share, but we can, of course, come back to any slides. Um, if, does, if anybody has any questions, you can unmute or you can ask in the chat, but we'll give you a few minutes. Let's see, is it common for college students to be able to study abroad multiple times, or is this a pretty unique opportunity? Um, I'm happy to tackle that and then we can add on different things. But so study abroad center was definitely a trendsetter with study abroad. So we were one of the first institutions in the country to be able to allow access and such convenient access to studying abroad. So there is an application process that you go through, but again, we guarantee that you have an abroad opportunity. So throughout the application process, you get to rank the, the um, areas where you wanna go, you get to choose which semester you go, so fall or spring, or of course the center term opportunities, but it is very easy to, to apply. It's not an in-depth or um, exhausting application process. So to get back to your question though, is, is it unique? Um, I think that it's becoming more common to be able to study abroad at different institutions. The thing that Center does, the financial aid piece is huge, the financial aid traveling. Most institutions you have to pretty much disaffiliate and pay for that out of pocket. Um, your financial aid packages, your loans, whatnot, they don't travel with you. So it is an expensive cost at a lot of different places. Um, it's also not as common to study abroad more than once at a lot of institutions. So the statistic that you'll see for center, the 85% is well above the national average. I mean, if you look at most institutions, their study abroad average is probably going to be in the 20s percent or less. Um, and then that's our, our multiple times. So about 50% of our students are taking advantage of abroad or away opportunities more than once. Um, so that is extremely unique. And again, it doesn't push you back either. One of our commitments is graduating in four years. And no matter how many times you study abroad, I think the record is nine or is it seven? Um, Ellen Tyra was the one who set that. And I forget if it were nine or seven, but it's up there. And she still graduated in four years, was able to do internships, was able to do a lot of different things. And so the uniqueness that Center has, again, is, is being able to make it easy but the advising that our faculty provide allow you to study abroad as many times as you would like to still graduate in four years um, and to still have an internship or a research opportunity. We're not gonna force you into a particular major if you study abroad multiple times. So there are science majors that study abroad multiple times. There are humanities majors, social sciences. We'll make it work for you. Yeah, I think for me, I, I often think about it as an accessibility issue. I think that for Center, we have made a really strong commitment to study abroad because to us, this is an experience, a transformative experience, I would say, um, that we want our students to have. And so we have been willing to invest into these programs to a degree that is different and is greater than a lot of places because we do see global citizenship as central to the center experience. And so um, that I think is what I see as, which Cody explained perfectly as, um, as the key difference. I think it's an access thing, both with money, we do do, you know, if you don't have a passport as a first year, like we'll help you get through that process. We'll pay for that process for you. Um, so also doing small things like that where we're thinking about access um, and you know, who can have this experience away as well. 
Yeah, and I think um, sort of the benefit of being at a smaller liberal arts school where the student to faculty ratio is so small is that you're able to work closely with an advisor to make sure that these experiences are feasible. You know, they work with your schedule, they're, um, you're still on track if you want to do um, major or minor or really just your major requirements, um, working really closely with that advisor to make sure that it's feasible. Um, and I would say a lot of students study abroad more than once. Um, I mean, one of my friends, he um, did Bhutan and then um, also was in Thailand. And I'm really confident when he gets back, it's like he never left. I think <laughs> that is sort of the benefit also of being in a small school. It's like you're able to go out and have these amazing experiences. But when you come back, it's like um, you're just in the ground running. It's like you're, you're thrown right back into it. And people miss you, of course, but um, you're able to come back and talk about these great experiences and it, it makes for a better center experience as a whole. So really encourage students to study abroad more than once if they're able to and if they want to um, and working closely with different advisors to making sure that they're getting all the requirements at the same time. Victoria, I like your question about the uh, do the Caribbean green monkeys attack people. So there's so much field research that goes on in that area that the monkeys are pretty used to humans walking around. But of course, there are protocols for those students that go to not you know, scare the monkeys or anything along those lines. But the faculty member that goes, um, Dr. Burns Gusado is awesome. And she's been doing this research for a really long time. So of course, safety is a key concern there and we make sure that our students are safe. But I've never heard of the story of a monkey attacking people. I see a lot of pictures of the monkeys just hanging out and maybe stealing food every now and then. Um, but, you know, as far as attacking or being aggressive, I haven't heard of any of those. So. Awesome. Any other questions before we log off and All right, well, um, hopefully you know how to get in touch with us in some way, shape, or form. You made it to the website and there's contact information for everybody. So feel free to reach out if you have any individual questions or want to continue the conversation. Any of us would be more than happy to, to work through that. And we're also happy to connect you with any students or um, anything if you want to talk more about the student experience from a current student. But uh, again, thank you all for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed it. And if there's anything we can do to help make your college search process easier, um, let us know. We're here for you. Thank you all. Have a good rest of your day. See ya.